Hi everyone and welcome to this third part on gold refining. We still have a lot of things to do such as recovering silver, palladium, platinum and also the gold that is in the ICs. This requires a lot of nitric acid which is relatively expensive and for all this to be worth it we don't want to spend money on nitric acid. I already gave you a tutorial in which I show how to make nitric acid from cheap household products, but in this video I'm going to show you another way of doing it. The point is that when we process the precious metals chemically, we end up with a lot of waste. I see many people simply pouring it into their drain. Not only is it bad for the environment, but they are also getting rid of precious waste. It is made of nitrates. The blue color suggests that there is a lot of copper nitrate, but there are also some others such as iron nitrate and nickel nitrate. We can turn this waste back into nitric acid, pure nitric acid. Let us see how. This waste is diluted, so the first thing we want to do is to remove as much water as possible. Now, if you are eager to try the method, you can simply put it on a hot plate and let the water boil off. That's perfectly fine. But eventually, we don't want to waste energy for doing this. So, simply let the sun do the job for us. Pour it into an open container and let the water evaporate. Sure, it may take several days, but we don't have to stupidly wait for it to be done. We can do something else in the meantime. So, it has been five days, sunny with some wind, so that helped to remove some water. There is still some left, but it seems that it's no longer evaporating. This might be because the nitrates that crystallized act as a desiccant. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to stop the evaporation process here. So we have some nitrate that crystallize. We can see them here. And something else that looks gooey. I don't know if this is some non-crystallized nitrate or anything else. Anyway, I'm going to process it and we will see what we get. So first, I'm going to transfer this into a Florence flask. So I transferred the mixture and I had to add a little bit of water because there were some crystals that were stuck in the big dish. So I'm going to heat this up in order to evaporate as much water as possible. So let me insert my probe and I am going to heat this up maybe at a hundred 10 or 115 that that will work I actually increased the temperature up to 170 degrees Celsius the water completely boiled off and some orange gas started to be produced so I stopped the heater because this gas was obviously nitrogen dioxide and we don't want to lose nitrogen each nitric acid molecule that we want to produce requires a nitrogen atom now, where did the nitrogen dioxide come from? I asked ChatGPT and it turns out that copper nitrate releases nitrogen dioxide when it is heated at 117 degrees Celsius. So this confirms that there is copper nitrate in here. There is not much. I don't expect to end up with a lot of nitric acid. Of course, in general, you should wait to have a lot of waste product before processing it. But today for the demo, that should be enough. The purpose is only to show the method. Now, we want the nitrate to react with sulfuric acid. And the question is how much sulfuric acid we should add. We could do a calculation if we know exactly what we have here. 
but that is not the case so what I'm gonna do is simply to add a lot of sulfuric acid the excess won't be lost anyway we will be able to recover it so add sulfuric acid slowly and wear goggles in case there is some acid projections because once again we don't know exactly what we have in there So far so good. All right. So let me add a lot now. And that's good enough. And now all we have to do is to set up a simple distillation and wait. So right now I started with a uh, temperature, I don't know if we can see on the camera, uh, 70 degrees just to see if the reaction is violent or not. And then I will increase the temperature. If you want a high concentration of nitric acid, it is a good idea to wrap the distillation apparatus in aluminum foil. This is because nitric acid is photosensitive and light has a tendency to decompose it into water, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So now the temperature is 90 degrees Celsius and here is our nitric acid. So I let the temperature that I measure here at the top rise to 120 degrees Celsius and it seems that I'm no longer getting any more nitric acid so I'm gonna stop here now at the bottom the temperature that I have is about 200 degrees so that's the temperature of the mixture that is here and okay I'm going to um, turn off the, the heater or actually I leave it on but I decrease the temperature and I'm going to let the temperature go down to about 80 degrees the the, the reason is that um, I don't want to let the salt crystallize the salt that are there now should be sulfate I don't want to let them crystallize otherwise I will have a hard time to get them out of the um, of the Florence flask but if I pour the mixture like this into uh, this pyric dish, it's probably going to shatter because of the thermal shock. So I'm going to let it go down to 80 degrees and then uh, I will pour everything into this dish and then I will be able to uh, decant the excess sulfuric acid. Now, let us see how much nitric acid we got. So, this is our yield. Not much, but actually it's better than what it looks like. Let us see why. First, let's measure the, um, how much we have. So, I'm going to measure the mass. Let me turn on the scale so that it's zeroed. So let us see. So it fumes red, which indicates that the concentration is probably at least 80%. We are going to measure it. All right. So we have a mass of 9.22 grams okay and we have we have let's see oops my we have 60 
64 mils. 64 mils. So let us calculate the concentration. So we obtained 64 mils of nitric acid with a mass of 92.2 grams. This corresponds to a density of about 1.44 grams per mil. Today the temperature is 31 degrees Celsius. So if we look at the table that gives the concentration of nitric acid as a function of density and temperature, we can see that this corresponds to a concentration of about 82%. Now remember that what we need for gold refining is only 40% nitric acid. And in the last part of the tutorial, we derived the formula that allows us to calculate how much water we need to add in order to dilute properly nitric acid. So, in our case, we have that the density of water is 1 gram per mil. The density of our concentrated nitric acid is 1.44 grams per mil. The volume that we have is 64 mils and the concentration is 82, 82%. So concentration is 0 0.82. So that means that the volume of water to add in order to decrease the concentration down to 40% is 97 mils. Thus, we need to add these 97 mils to our 64 mils and we end up with 161 mils of 40% nitric acid for gold refining. That's not bad if we consider that we processed only a small batch of nitrates. This is what was left in the Florence flask. It's still very hot, so I'm going to wait for this to cool off and we can see the excess sulfuric acid. Now, of course, it is polluted but we will see, we might be able to decant it and if needed we could distill it, but that's not needed. Uh, it's not a problem if, if that sulfuric acid looks dirty because we can reuse it next time we process some waste, some nitrate waste. We will simply add this dirty sulfuric acid to the nitrates and again that will produce nitric acid. Okay, so there's no need to spend energy and time purifying that sulfuric acid. So here is our excess sulfuric acid. I could wait longer for the residue to go down and decant it in order to get it a little bit clearer, but I don't need to. I can use it as is. Uh, let me prove that it still does the job let's see what it does to a paper napkin so let me just put a little bit and that's the usual test this is nearly 98 percent sulfuric acid all right now uh, here is what we are left with this sludge, what is it? Uh, I guess that it's um, mostly anhydrous copper sulfate. So let us test it. If I take a little bit of it and put it into this beaker, if I add water, it should turn into a nice blue color. Let's see. Not bad. Copper sulfate. So that means that you can use it as is as stump remover or you can use a solution of copper sulfate electrolyze it in order to recover some new sulfuric acid. Watch my tutorial about this. So I hope that you are convinced that we can recycle our waste product and save money.